Hi, this is Tom from serotofinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through motor neurone disease. And you can find written notes on this topic at zerotofinals.com slash MND or in the neurology section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge on this content and help you remember the information for longer at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Motor neurone disease is a term that encompasses a variety of specific diseases affecting the motor nerves. Motor neurone disease is a progressive, eventually fatal condition where the motor neurones stop functioning. The motor neurones are responsible for controlling muscles and muscle movement. Motor neurone disease has no effect on the sensory neurons, meaning that sensation is normal and intact. The presence of sensory symptoms suggests an alternative diagnosis. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is the most common and well-known type of motor neurone disease. Stephen Hawking had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Progressive bulbar palsy is the second most common form of motor neurone disease, and it primarily affects the muscles of talking and swallowing, the bulbar muscles. Other types to be aware of are progressive muscular atrophy and primary lateral sclerosis. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. Motor neurone disease involves a progressive degeneration of both the upper and lower motor neurons. The exact cause is unclear, although several mechanisms have been considered. Many genes have been linked with an increased risk of developing the condition. Family history is important as around 5-10% to of cases are inherited. There seems to be an increased risk with smoking, exposure to heavy metals and certain pesticides. Let's talk about the presentation. The typical patient is a late middle-aged, for example 60 years old, man possibly with an affected relative. There is an insidious, meaning slow and subtle, progressive weakness of the muscles throughout the body, affecting the limbs, trunk, face and speech. The weakness is often first noticed in the upper limbs. There may be increased fatigue when exercising. Patients may complain about clumsiness, dropping things more often or tripping over. They may develop slurred speech, which is called dysarthria. Signs on examination of disease in the lower motor neurons are muscle wasting reduced muscle tone, fasciculations, which are twitches in the muscles, and reduced reflexes. Signs on examination of disease in the upper motor neurons are increased tone or spasticity of the muscles, brisk reflexes, and an upgoing plantar reflex. Let's talk about making the diagnosis. The diagnosis of motor neurone disease needs to be made very carefully. It's based on the clinical presentation after excluding other conditions, and it should only be made by a specialist when there's certainty. The diagnosis is often delayed, which causes stress. Finally, let's talk about management. There are no effective treatments for halting or reversing the progression of the disease. A medication called Riluzole can slow the progression of the disease and extend survival by several months in patients with ALS. Non-invasive ventilation, or NIV, can be used to support breathing when the respiratory muscles weaken. 
Management of the condition involves supporting the person and their family, which will include breaking bad news effectively and supportively when giving the diagnosis, multidisciplinary team input to support and maintain their quality of life, symptom control, for example, baclofen used for muscle spasticity and anti-muscarinic medications for excessive saliva, Benzodiazepines may help breathlessness that's worsened by anxiety. Advanced directives can be used to document the patient's wishes for when the disease progresses. And end-of-life care. Research has consistently shown that testing yourself after learning a topic has a powerful effect on how long you retain that information. This is known as the testing effect. Studying and then testing yourself results in longer lasting and stronger recall on that information when tested at a later date, even when compared with additional study sessions. If you're preparing for a medical exam and you're not regularly testing your knowledge and practicing your recall, you're failing to maximize your potential. The Zero to Finals member site contains flashcards, short answer questions, multiple choice questions and extended matching questions that are purpose-built to supplement the Zero to Finals content, helping you build your internal database of knowledge and take advantage of the powerful testing effect. If you like the Zero to Finals notes, books, videos and podcasts, then you'll love the member's site.